He was in charge of the world's largest data breach, impacting 3 billion Yahoo users. Alexei Balan, who worked with Russian spies, was a fugitive on the run and made the FBI's most wanted list. Alexei Balan was born in Latvia on June 27, 1987, and would start to learn the skill of hacking from a very young age. He would adopt a series of online aliases, such as M4G, Mag, Quarker, and many others. In the year of 2006, at the age of 18, while living in Russia, the alias M4G gained attention within the cyber community and was associated with several security breaches. During his initial hacking phase, M4G concentrated on websites connected to ICQ communications. Among the targeted sites were Unishop, Nomikov, and Unis. Additionally, Lord Mansa, and massively multiplayer online game, was another target of M4Gs. Balan's scope would widen, when an Israel cloud computing company named TJAT found itself in the crosshairs of M4G's digital attacks. A screenshot from a hacking forum where M4G was active suggests that the data was from TJAT. These early exploits established Balan as a hacking prodigy. Balan started to collaborate with other hackers. He recognised the power of shared expertise and reached out to fellow hackers, creating a network that broadened the scope of his digital exploits. Balan would seek assistance to crack passwords. This aimed at bypassing security measures and would help Balan gain unauthorised access. Additionally, the collaboration provided a marketplace for the sale of hacked data, further aiding to Balan's financial gains. He would sell credit card information, hacked ICQ accounts, and other data from a number of breach forums. Balan's skill set would evolve, and by the year 2011, he underwent a hacking transformation, emerging as a skilled web app hacker. His focus shifted to the intricate world of web applications, with a particular specialization in breaching WordPress sites. WordPress sites are widely used content management systems that would present both a challenge and an opportunity for Balan. His expertise in breaching these sites showcased a deep understanding of web application vulnerabilities. Balan's first known web application victim operated a vulnerable WordPress server placed in a branch office that was part of the corporate WAN with direct access to internal systems lacking security measures. Balan pinpointed the server through a Google search and exploited it. Over a five day period, he would execute the following. Balan began to modify the PHP authentication mechanism embedded within the vulnerable WordPress site to capture the confidential credentials of corporate users who interacted with the site. Then he used Nmap, a network scanner. He would discover the target's internal wiki, uncovering potential gateways for his intrusion. Balan then seized a collection of valid credentials from the wiki. With these, Balan then learned the administrator procedures via the wiki. While everything was going well, Balan ran into an administrative portal where two-factor authentication was required and failed to access it. Balan then identified a concealed staging instance of the portal, a gateway that didn't need the two-factor authentication. This discovery opened a new way for Balan to gain access to the administrative portal. He obtained a MySQL credential that gained him access to customers' data. From here, a section of the database was split into chunks and extracted by placing them in a network file sharing server. Balan's hacking would extend. He displayed our understanding of the mechanisms safeguarding Linux-based systems. By altering authentication protocols, he could manipulate access control, paving the way for unauthorized entry. Now, for Balan's second known victim, they had to be notified by the FBI to find out that they had suffered a security breach. The FBI had found an engineering account that had been logged into a corporate VPN from an IP address in Russia. Investigations revealed a compromised web server operating on the engineer's iMac, located in the kitchen in his home. This web server functioned as a Linux virtual machine running with the iMac. The line had identified the server through an engineer's public LinkedIn profile. The Linux virtual machine hosted a handful of PHP sites. Balan worked to remotely compromise the Linux virtual machine, the host system, and finally his target. He performed the breach as follows. He would start with a manual examination of each PHP site, a hands-on approach to finding out potential weaknesses. He would find one, 
custom arbitrary file upload flaw, a vulnerability within the file upload system. It would exploit this weakness, gaining a foothold within the system. Balan then elevated his privileges on the system. He would alter Linux and PHP authentication mechanisms to capture credentials, unlocking the gateway to sensitive data. He then proceeded by obtaining and cracking local user password hashes. Armed with the decrypted passwords, he authenticates with the Linux virtual machine, using a valid credential as his digital key. Then, he launched a brute force password attack from the guest Linux virtual machine, targeting the host operating system, running Mac OS. To cover his tracks, Balan developed tools to clear log entries within the Linux virtual machine. He successfully authenticates the host operating system using user credentials. Balan found the heart of the host operating system, where he extracts corporate VPN configuration details, including gateway specifics, client certifications, and private keys. Finally, he combines the acquired VPN settings with known credentials, authenticating and gaining access to the corporate VPN, identifying as the engineer himself. Balan would maintain the corporate VPN access for three months. Reports of breaches credited to Balan surfaced not only in his home country of Russia, but spread through the landscapes of Ukraine and the border Soviet bloc. These incidents had targets such as Big Mir, an entertainment website in Ukraine, and Rambler, one of Russia's largest search engines and web portals. Rambler publicly acknowledged a 2014 breach, acknowledging the compromise of records from 98 million accounts. In the year 2012 and 2013, so when Alexei Balan started to face legal challenges, the US authorities filed indictments against him for orchestrating cyber attacks on three American e-commerce companies. Balan's hack had reached the corporate giants. The indictment also linked him to high-profile breaches that included Zappos, a shoe retailer, Evernote, a note-taking app, and Scribe, a document-sharing platform. When the United States said they wanted to arrest him, the 29-year-old with blue eyes was on the run. The US asked other countries to help catch him. It's believed that he was in Greece when he was apparently apprehended in 2013, but somehow he escaped. It is still unclear what specific crime he was arrested for and how he got away. Alexei Balan was added to the FBI's most wanted list in 2013 and the FBI offered a $100,000 reward for anyone who could help catch him. There was an Interpol red notice, which meant he could be arrested if police in any country saw him, whether if he was in his home country of Latvia or hanging out in places like Thailand. However, he managed to stay out of trouble. The international response to Balan's cyber escapade extended beyond mere law enforcement efforts. The US government imposed sanctions on Balan. These measures were intended to tighten the net around him, limiting his avenues for financial support and international movement. However, Balan continued to elude the grasp of justice, raising questions about the extent of internal support he might receive. One layer of mystery with Balan's escape lies to his alleged connections with Russian intelligence service. Whispers within the cybersecurity circles hinted at a network offering protection and assistance to Balan. The notion of state-sponsored support added an extra layer of complexity to an already complex problem. In 2014, Balan had redirected his hacking efforts towards a target that would send shockwaves through the online world, Yahoo. The attack begins with a spear phishing email dispatched in early 2014 to a Yahoo company employee. Although the scope of the targeting remains unknown, the vulnerability of the attack lies in the fact that all it takes is one person to click on the malicious link. Blan explored the network with a keen eye for two prizes, Yahoo's user database and the account management tool, essential for database modifications. He was successful, and to ensure sustained access, he strategically implanted a backdoor on a Yahoo server. In December, he stole a backup copy of Yahoo's user database and relocated it to his personal computer. The database contained sensitive information, 
including names, phone numbers, password challenge questions and answers, and significantly, password recovery emails, along with a cryptographic value, unique to each account. Armed with these, Belan alongside his partner in crime, Carmen Baratov, I will talk about him later, targeted specific users. With the account management tool, lacking the ability to search for usernames, the hackers turned their attention to the recovery email addresses. Sometimes, identifying targets was done by recovery email addresses, while other times, the email domain hinted at the account holder's affiliation with an organization of interest. Utilizing stolen cryptographic values, the hackers employed a script installed on a Yahoo server to generate access cookies. These cookies gained the hackers access to a user's email account without the need for a password. Balan and his associates navigated the approximately 500 million accounts, generated cookies for only a mere fraction of them, around 6,500 accounts. The hacked roster included individuals ranging from an assistant to the deputy chairman of Russia, an officer in Russia's Ministry of Internal Affairs, Russian journalists, officials from states neighboring Russia, US government workers, an employee of a Swiss Bitcoin wallet company, and even a US airline worker. When Yahoo first approached, the FBI expressed concerns of about 26 targeted accounts. The full extent of the breach began to surface prompting a significant escalation in the FBI's investigation. By December 2016, Yahoo publicly unveiled details of the breach, urging hundreds of millions of users to change their passwords. The Yahoo hack wasn't just about data theft for Balan. It was an operation with multiple intentions. In a move that added a layer of sophistication to the breach, Balan engaged in the manipulation of Yahoo search results. His tactics aimed and not only gaining information, but also leveraging the breach for financial gain. When users would search for terms like medication or anything similar, they were redirected to an online pharmacy company. This operation relied on an unnamed cloud computing company, which seemingly acted as a middleman between the Yahoo link and the pharmacy. The pharmacy paid Balan a commission for every visitor he steered their way. The cyber attack took a turn when the US government through its indictment, laid the connection between Alexei Balan and Russia's Federal Secret Service, FSB, Russia's counterpart to the FBI. The revelation provided a glimpse into collaboration between a notorious cyber criminal and state actors. The US Department of Justice detailed how Balan worked with FSB operatives, Dmitry Dukachev and Igor Sushchin. They directed Balan's focus towards specific Yahoo accounts critical to Russian intelligence. The combination of individual expertise and state resources in the pursuit of cyber espionage proved a great alliance. It signaled a shift in the nature of cyber threats, with state entities leveraging the capabilities of skilled hackers for political objectives. The compromised accounts from the Yahoo hack, including those of government officials, journalists, and individuals strategically relevant to Russian interests, showed the intersection between the digital realm and statecraft. The breach was not merely an act of cybercrime, it was a calculated move for political effect. In March 2017, a grand jury in the Northern District of California has issued indictments against four defendants, including two officers of the FSB. The charges include computer hacking, economic espionage, and various criminal offenses that had to do on the hack against Yahoo. The individuals named in the indictment are Dmitry Dukachev, Igor Sushchin, Alexei Balan, and Carmen Baratov. Carmen Baratov was known to be Balan's secondary hacker, who specialized in targeting specific users. Both Dmitry and Igor were Russian citizens and had separate roles at the FSB. Igor served as the head of information security for a company in Russia, providing information about employees to the FSB while Dmitry was allegedly an officer of the Russian FSB unit, known as the Center for Information Security, or Center 18. He also served as the FBI's contact in Moscow for cybercrime matters. These agents would pay Carmen's for his hacking efforts. 
compensating him with approximately $1.1 million to acquire credentials from 80 Yahoo users. Employing spear phishing tactics, Baratov targeted specific individuals, including government officials, members of the American and Russian media, and professionals in the financial service sector. Baratov skillfully crafted emails to give the appearance of legitimacy, tricking users into providing their passwords on counterfeit login pages. Baratov's was arrested in Canada and would go to trial and plead guilty. Throughout the trial, Baratov asserted that he was unaware that two of his patrons were affiliated with the FSB. Carmen's Baratov originally gained attention of the FSB agents when he was offering his hacking services on darknet forums, securing him a role in the breach. Dmitry Dukachev, Igor Sushin, and Alexei Balan all remained on the run, likely hiding in Russia, and are all currently on the FBI's most wanted list. With the Yahoo breach initially known to compromise the data of 500 million users, in a later announcement, Yahoo revealed that the extent of the breach was much larger than that, affecting all 3 billion user accounts. The broader impact of this announcement would result in an increase in the number of class action lawsuits by both shareholders and Yahoo account holders. Prior to the announcement, Yahoo was already contending with at least 41 customer class action lawsuits across US federal and state courts. Security experts looked into Alexei Balan's tactics. Chris McNabb was one of the experts that shed light on Balan's hacking. McNabb's analysis revealed a cyber criminal who meticulously exploited security vulnerabilities, leaving a trail of compromised systems. The Balan case highlighted the critical need for organizations to fortify their defenses against phishing attacks. They need to conduct thorough vulnerability assessments and stay vigilant against evolving tactics. The cybersecurity landscape, as shown by McNabb's analysis, resembles a cat and mouse game between cybercriminals and those defending against them. Balan's tactics, driven by a combination of social engineering and technical sophistication, showed the continuous need for innovation in cybersecurity strategies. McNabb's insights fuel discussion within the cybersecurity communities, prompting a revelation of defense mechanisms to try and stay one step ahead of the cyber criminals. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that video, be sure to subscribe and click another video on screen if you're interested.